Yo, what's good everyone? My name is Alex and in this video, we're going to be talking about the Sony a7 III and whether or not this camera is still a good buy in 2022. So I bought this a7 III at release four years ago in 2018. And since then, it's been my primary shooter for everything. Paid gigs, portraits, events, street and travel. So I'm very familiar with this camera and I have to say it's held up surprisingly well. But before we get into all of the pros and cons of the Sony a7 III, I want to give a shout out to the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. If you don't know, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of online classes and members across 150 countries. Initially, I wanted to join Skillshare to see how I can start and grow my YouTube channel since I didn't personally know anyone who can help me. I was really excited to see that Skillshare has classes from actual YouTubers who can help provide guidance in that area. One of the most helpful classes so far has been YouTube success. Build an authentic channel that's worth the follow by Sorel Amor. One of the key takeaways from this class is to think about how your content can create value for your audience. And furthermore, it's really important to stay authentic and true to yourself and not get lost in chasing the views and subs. With this advice in mind, I'm trying to focus my videos on helping other creatives become better photographers. So it's the start of a new year and this is the perfect time to learn, grow, and be more creative. So the first 1,000 people who use the link in my description will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare. The Sony a7 III came out in 2018 and one of its best features back then still holds true to this day, the sensor. The 24 megapixel full frame sensor is the heart of this camera and the main reason why it's still one of the most popular mirrorless cameras today. The image quality, color, and dynamic range is top notch. With 15 stops of dynamic range, you can recover tons of details in shadows or highlights. Shooting RAW with the a7 III has saved me more times than I care to admit because certain files that I thought were unrecoverable are actually fine after playing around with them in Lightroom. 24 megapixels is more than enough resolution for most people. You can crop in pretty tight on images, especially if you're only using them for social media. And I've printed pictures up to 30 inches without loss of detail. And one more thing to note is that the files coming out of the a7 III are really easy and fast to edit. For example, the files from my a7R4 take considerably longer to process and edit. Not to mention the added storage costs. The autofocus on the a7 III was ahead of its time. It borrowed a lot of its tech from the Sony a9 with 693 phase detection autofocus points covering 93% of the sensor. And there's also 425 contrast detection focus points which helps lock focus in low light. In my experience, the autofocus is extremely fast and accurate. Especially when you pair it with eye autofocus and 10 frames per second continuous burst, there's very little that you can't capture. The a7 III is also known for its low light capabilities. And while it's not as good as the Sony a7S series, the ISO range of 100 to 51,200 is more than enough for everyday shooting. Here are some example shots taken at various ISOs. As you can see, the low light files are pretty clean and I can comfortably shoot up to ISO 6400. Best of all, there is an extended range of 50 through 204,800 ISO. That is a huge range. And although it does get pretty noisy at those higher ISOs, at least you have that option. Now this next pro applies to pretty much every Sony camera, but if you're on a budget and you're looking at the a7 III, then the huge lens selection is definitely a positive. There are 41 full frame lenses from Sony and tons of lenses from third party manufacturers like Samyang, Tamron, Viltrox, Sigma, and more. And don't forget about all the old film glass that you can adapt to this camera. So from top of the line glass like Sony G Master and Zeiss lenses to more budget friendly options, you can definitely find a kit that works for any price point. 
All right, so no camera is perfect, so let's get into some of the negatives. The resolution and refresh rate of the electronic viewfinder is not the best. I personally don't really use it, so it's not a huge issue. But for those that do, the resolution may seem blurry and laggy, especially in low light. And as someone who shoots mainly looking at the rear screen, that can also be improved. The screen only tilts and doesn't flip out. So you can't see yourself if you're trying to vlog with this camera. In my experience, the rear screen also doesn't get bright enough. So if you're outside in direct sunlight, it can be pretty difficult to see at times, even with the sunny setting on. The build for the a7 III can both be a pro or a con depending on your use case. For me, I like the compact and lightweight nature of this camera, but I know a lot of people much prefer a beefier grip, which the newer Sony cameras have. So far, the robustness and weather sealing has been great. I've shot with this camera in blizzards, sandstorms, thunderstorms, and pretty much any weather condition you can think of. Just be sure all the flaps are closed and the hot shoe mount is covered. I've seen cases where even a single drop of rain in that hot shoe mount can kill the camera. Thankfully, it hasn't happened to me, but of course, this is just up to luck. So it's clear that the pros definitely outweigh the cons. The Sony a7 III was ahead of its time when it came out in 2018. And if anything, it's even better in 2022 due to all of the software updates and larger lens selection available. And the best part about buying a four-year-old camera is the price. You can pick up an a7 III used for under 1500 USD, which is a great deal. For that price, I can't think of any other full-frame mirrorless camera with dual card slots, in-body image stabilization, awesome autofocus, and the ability to shoot 4K 30 or 120 frames in 1080p. So yeah, not only is the a7 III an awesome photo camera, you can also use it to shoot video for hybrid shooting. There is a ton of tech packed into this camera, and if you do decide to purchase it, you can definitely make your money back with a couple of paid gigs. Okay, so let me know if you have any questions about the Sony a7 III. This is still my most recommended camera when people ask me which full frame camera they should buy. And for those of you who already have this camera, I would love to hear your thoughts and what your experience has been. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to support my channel and see similar videos to this one, definitely subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Peace.